Hello, hello. Nobody is here, but I'm going to go ahead and pretend like the audience is full. And let's get all my other stuff set up right. All right, that's there. That's there. If you're there, hi, Peony. I'm so glad to see you here. Is that what you prefer to be called, Peony? Thank you for your recent kind comments. Glad to see a friendly face. I am not doing anything earth shattering today, but I have these journals that I made that need some tassels to go on the sides. So I figured I would make some tassels and chat a while. And let's see how long I want to make these guys twice twice the length i think is good okay peony is fine good to know oh i think i made one of my lights going right in my eyes <laughs> that probably wasn't bright let's see if i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that can be in the same color family <clears throat> i think i'm just gonna I always think I'm going to find a quicker, easier way to do tassels. And really, there's just no, no two ways about it. You just got to do them. <laughs> Are you working on anything today, Peony? I am actually trying to get a head start on my January. Yesterday, I cut so much paper because I realized I really wasn't using that much scrapbook paper. So I'm going to fill these flowish journals with a lot of scrapbook paper. And then I went through my eco prints and my leaf impressions and other papers. So just trying to figure out how many pages I'm going to put in them and what else I can put in them. And I have too much of everything and a definite problem with focusing on stuff. What a surprise. Anybody that's known me for any length of time knows I, I jump around too much. Used to always get hassled about that. Okay, I still get hassled about that. Need to go finish Christmas shopping? You don't have a lot of people to buy for anymore. Kids are all grown up. Grandson's going to be... You know, he's 15 and a half, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two more. It's so like everything, I figure I'll make a big mess today, and then I'm going to probably spend most of tomorrow cleaning up my mess, or at least trying to clean up my mess. All right, we can use this gold. You know, my problem with fibers is every time I go in the thrift store and I see fibers, I honestly cannot stop myself from buying more because I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure every time there's going to be something I can use them for. And I'm usually right. It's just, you know, I, I, yeah, maybe I should put some little cards of fibers in these flow journals. That might be a thing to do. Or maybe I should just make jumbo packs, you know, gift packs of stuff. After cutting all the, the scrapbook paper, I cut 240 sheets of scrapbook paper. Um, I have all these off cuts from cutting the 12 by 12s. I don't know. It would be fun to sit and craft together. Yes. Well, one of these times I'm trying to get into doing lives more often. Let's see, I should pull these things up. Um, if I, I thought if I could try to do them once a week, I, I know I stink at scheduling, but if I could do them once a week and maybe at a di couple different times a day so people in the different parts of the, the world can jump in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did you make any Christmas gifts this year? My goal for next year is to make gifts to uh, to get into a couple of the local stores, I hope. It says six people are watching. I guess they're going to be my silent majority today, and that's fine. 
busy doing other things. It's hard to chat if you're trying to craft at the same time. I do appreciate a thumbs up if people are watching and and feel so inclined. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Let's get some browns. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I I love making papers. I think maybe tomorrow. See, I might be live again. Maybe I'll just do a video of it. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to make some papers with some watercolors. And uh, uh, so I can have those to add to these flow journals. Maybe I should just make a bunch of Franken papers with the... I just don't use scrapbook paper anymore, so I hate to put any kind of effort into them. But all those op cuts, I guess, would make some good Franken paper. And it's, it's winter here, so papers don't dry as fast. So if I want to make any papers that have to dry, I have to clean the studio first so I can set everything out on my island. Yeah, I haven't played with watercolors in months. So I thought, well, I found when I was cleaning the studio yesterday a little bit, looking for all the missing scrap, well, not missing scrapbook paper, but trying to get all the scrapbook paper in one place. I found oh, so much sheet music. I thought, well, I'm going to do something with watercolors and uh, sheet music. So it's not just boring water, just boring, you know, sheet music papers. But um, yeah, got to clean. Got to, you know, I'm, I wish I had the habit. I envy people that have the habit of cleaning up their workspace right after they're done. That has never been me. And I really want to do some more eco prints, but it's too cold. Five, six, seven. Maybe I can figure out a way to, well, have to clean out the garage. See, more cleaning. Really, you know, I need I need an artsy um, cleaning person that I can play to come pay to come help me clean up. But then the hard thing about that is, of course, nobody ever does stuff the way you want it done. They always do something just a little bit different. All right, three colors. Let's see what else can we add in there. Uh, oh, the gray will go. Yeah, and I don't. I never put my papers in the oven. So even when I'm doing tea dyeing, I don't do things in the oven. But I do have this these rolling carts, and I can get like ten cookie sheets in the cart, and then I can get. I think like 20 cookie sheets on my island. So I just need to, to decide that's when I want to do it. Cause it's like a two, well, three step process. I mean, if I'm going to do eco dyeing, then I got to set those papers up, do the eco dyeing, let them dry. But then I reuse my leaves and do my leaf impressions. This is how I get organized. These little plastic laundry tubs from um, the dollar store. I've, I have, I am not kidding. I probably have like 30 of them and I tend to, I'm trying to get in the habit of like this, like putting my project stuff, this, you know, that's one project right in there. So all the tassels, whether I'm done or not, will go back in there. And then at least when I have to go put all the fibers away, cause they live in the studio, uh, they'll be in one place. But what's bad is when I'm sitting here sewing and then I'm cutting off little trims and, there's just stuff all over the place. Yeah, I'm such a dingling about stuff in the oven that I'm sure I would start a fire. So I've never gotten into the habit of doing that. And it's probably a really good thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got a um, fireplace insert that puts out some nice heat. So when the dog is not camped out in front of it, I can roll my little carts over there. So I might maybe after. Nah, I probably won't do anything until after New Year's because we're having company for New Year's Eve during the day here. So I won't want to make a mess. I won't want to make a bigger mess. I mean, I already have a mess, but I don't want to make a bigger mess. All right, let's see. That's got kind of a blue, silvery blue in it. I think that'll work. Uh, let's see. It will work if I can find the end somewhere. There we go. 
one, two, three, four. I think I do like 10 different. I can never remember. Every time I make tassels, they're always a little bit different. But I forget how much time it takes just doing the prep for getting them ready to, you know, put through their little rings. I thought, well, at least I could sit and do that and chat if anybody was around. One, two, three, four. I realize I have a ton of blue fibers, so I'm going to have to make some blue journals so I can use them up. I had no idea I had so many blue fibers. Do you have to go far for shopping, Peony? We don't have any big malls or anything in our town. Um, small mall in a nearby town, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm also playing with watercolors uh, digitally, trying to do some digital papers with watercolors, which is a whole new thing for me. So that's that's been a mostly fun adventure. It's quite a learning learning curve. But it might be a fun way for me to do some different styles of papers. All right, we've got five colors. Let's see, here we go. There's a nice black brown. My husband is going to brave Costco when he gets home from work today, the big warehouse store. And uh, I'm always so grateful that he does that. I just, I hate crowds of people and all the jostling around and people that are grumpy because they can't find what they're looking for. And I am so grateful. He's, he loves to do that kind of shopping and he's got, he walks so fast. Anybody that walks with him knows he walks super, super fast. And so he's a foot taller than I am. So he's got like this really long stride and I've got a short stride. It's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> so I am grateful he will go off and do that kind of stuff. He's got to cook for an office party tomorrow. I always have the best laid plans for getting organized and staying organized. But boy, they don't last long. I thought I'm just going to do my hand stitching on the couch by the TV. And uh, I had one of these tubs and I was putting all my stitching stuff in it. That didn't last. <laughs> now I have like three tubs over there and a bunch of scraps of fabric and all these things of thread. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Let's do one more. Hey, Vicki. Yeah, these husbands with these long strides, boy, it's a, it's a chore sometimes trying to keep up with them. We were out with friends a few weeks ago, and their 13-year-old daughter, who had, you know, the, the teenager energy, was trying to keep up with them. She's like, oh, he's fast. He's so fast. And your husband does the shopping, too. Boy, isn't that, aren't we lucky? I just... I guess maybe when I was younger, maybe I didn't have any choice. I didn't mind, but I'm just so grateful now that he does that. I don't really like to take off out of the house much at all. You working on anything today, Vicki? Eight people watching, two people chatting. Interesting. Social dynamics. My hands are stuck in cookie dough or glue or gesso, and I can't get to the, t the keyboard. I have nothing to say. <laughs> now, see, if it was in person, that would be me not being quiet. I can be talkative because I'm here online, but if it was in person... There would be a corner of the room where all the really shy people hung out, and that's where I would be hanging out. Bye, Penny. Good luck shopping. Oh, Vicki, the first journals you've ever made. Yay. Good for you. Welcome to the wonderful world of journal making. What kind of embellishments are you working on? And Penny, if I don't see you again, have a happy holiday.
It's so addicting, Vicky. So addicting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I need more. Bugs. Oh, I love bugs. Love bugs. Eight. Oh, my goodness, guys. I am so hot. I One of my lights is going right on me. It is so hot. I can't believe it. This must be what it's like in the TV studios. Yeah, I think after I do these tassels, I'm going to do um, a bunch of kind of, can't figure out what to call them. I don't want to call them plain James, Janes because that sounds kind of negative, but I want to do just some uh, simple journals, writing journals filled with writing paper and uh, drawing paper, but no embellishments, really. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to call them. I think I'm just going to do them traveler's notebook style. Ah, so you've always sewn and then you've come to the paper. See, now I've always played with paper and I only started sewing about a year ago. And oh my goodness, I am just so hooked on it. I wish that I had had more support about sewing when I was younger because I would be much better at it. Plain Janes. Does that sound negative, though? See, that's what I was going to call them was Plain Janes, um, you know, because it's just sort of a simple, unadorned. Basically, what I want to do is, ah, you know, these style of notebooks. I don't know if you've seen my other video on these, but these style of notebooks. So when you open them up, they've got just pockets. And then I just want to put plain writing paper and drawing paper in them. And I'm not going to fill them with embellishments. That way I can keep a, a lower price point on them. And I could just call them simple journals or something. But Hey, Lorna. Happy to see you here. So lots of sewers that have... Uh, only in the last you know few years discovered paper interesting see and I always I, I could never get enough paper paper and glue paper and glue and anything that I could glue down I love doing that but sewing sewing is fairly recent so Lorna if you hear the phrase plain Jane does that sound negative to you I don't know why I feel like I have to name things. It's like I have to put labels on everything. I know that's not necessarily a good thing, but. Yeah, Lorna, you've had a lot of different jobs. That sounds like you've had a lot more interesting jobs than mine sitting in an office cubicle. I mean, I was a writer for many years, but I spent a lot of years in a cubicle, too. One, two, three. Four, five, six, I think that's enough, but we'll cut one more just in case. Yours have names. Do you name an individual journal or do you name a style? See, individual journals I think are easy. If I'm doing like a, you know, an artistic journal, then I don't have trouble naming that. But if I want to have like something that I'm going to constantly try and keep in stock in my shop. All right, I've got one kind, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. That'll make a good, eh, maybe one more. Uh, one more color that we can add in there. I have that one already. I'll add this one. Yeah, the fabric creation you made for the cover. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Oh, interesting, Vicki. Both of your parents were artists. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody in my family that's had any artistic ability until me, so that was kind of um, kind of a surprise. Yeah, naming photographs and paintings. The one and only time that I was in an art show and I had to name some of my collages for that and then write one of those foo-foo artist statements. Wow, that was tough work. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, all this stuff feels really good. And I'm not even making a dent. It just kills me. I, I have got to quit shopping. And I have another haul video I haven't even posted yet because I couldn't resist when I went out yet. See, that's why I need to stay home. If I go out, I go shopping. If I stay home, I don't spend money. So I don't shop that much online, at least not like I used to. Three, four, five, six. This will be seven. Well, I have one friend who does fine art in pastels. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. She exhibits in a lot of galleries and her work is sold to a lot of medical establishments. And she just tells me that, you know, it's that I don't want to take the time to learn how to draw because it is, it's an investment in time and in, in building that muscle memory and learning all the techniques. And I don't know, I just can't seem to, can't seem to stick with it. So I must not want it badly enough. All right, let's see here. We have, this always feels so uncoordinated, but let's see if I move, let's see. Ah, I'm not helping myself here. All right, I want one of each. Maybe I should do that first, pull them aside. No. Nope. I'm making the simple complicated, right? It's something I do really, really well. All right, we have one kind, two, three. Bobby Darren. <laughs> Yeah, if it doesn't come in a fun way, go find something else. That's kind of been my thing. Like I, for gosh, for months, I was saving all this um, intricate, not intricate, but interesting 3D plastic kind of stuff because I really, really thought I wanted to do assemblage. And then I pulled it all out and looked at it and I just couldn't, it just didn't excite me at all. I played with it a little bit and I thought, well, that's just, obviously not my thing and I'm sure that if I had spent a lot of time at it I could have gotten much better at it but it just didn't it just didn't excite me enough to want to get better at it sometimes I wonder if people watch people like me doing this sort of thing and think oh why is she doing it like that doesn't she know that she could do it this way or she could do it that way or I don't do it like that but It works as long as I get to the end result I want. Hey, Terry. Hello. Happy holidays. So glad to see you here. All right. Oh, I should have probably cut my little other things too, huh? Oh, I should have probably cut my little other things too, huh? For tying off. These are just going to be really simple. I might add some beads to them later, later but I want to keep price is reasonable. My goal is to stock Etsy with physical sh stuff as well as digital stuff next year and keep it reasonable enough that people want to shop. <laughs> That's true, Lorna. They can always pipe up and tell us a better way to do something. <laughs> I do get comments later, people saying, well, you know, if, if I'm telling them I'm having difficulty with something, they'll they'll make a suggestion later and that's always helpful. <laughs> well, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing there, was I? That's funny. All right, let's just one more time here. All right. Got that. You want them all to be, hi, Anne, welcome. You want them to be Gunter Tenderbug? I am, oh, uh, Greta, is that who you're talking about? Greta Thurn Thurnberg, the wonderful activist? Yeah, and you know, it's funny, when I was writing and I was working on a book, you know, there was always that time where, you know, is there an easier way, is there a better way? 
And I got so hung up in trying to go better and go faster that what I forgot about was enjoying the journey. And so with art, that's really what I'm trying to do is tell myself it's all about the journey. Let's just have a good time making things. Let's de-stress because goodness knows we all have enough stress in our lives. All right. One very simple tassel that then can go on the edge of these. That's that's all I'm going for is a simple tassel can go on the edge of these. That's that's all I'm going for is a simple tassel to go on these simple journals that are going to have some sort of a simple name. I don't know what that name's going to be. Let's cut the strings too. Vicky, what are your colors? This batch, this first batch here is kind of earth tones. I've got um, I've got some purples. I've got some black and whites I'm working on. I'm trying to get myself. Uh, Zoe says, Merry Christmas. I'm absolutely sure that's what the doggy translation is. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that dogs that she hates are walking by outside on the street. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to push myself to work outside of my color normal colors like purple purple was my color when I was a, a kid and now green is my color and not everybody likes green so I'm really trying to make myself and I like earth tones but I'm trying to make myself work with some purples and pinks and oranges and blues three I like blue but I like blue as far as cobalt blue glass goes and blue and white Delft kind of stuff goes. Yeah, this dog is a barrel of laughs most of the time. <laughs> She's wonderful. I absolutely love my Zoe. Today is her gotcha day. We are celebrating that six years ago we we got her. Six years ago, seven years ago. Seven years ago we got her. Yeah, seven years ago today we, we brought her home. She was a rescue dog, like most of our dogs usually are, and uh, by ours, I mean at, at, our, at this house. And she was such a pain for the poor guys that were trying to catch her. She was like on an episode of Pitbulls and Parolees where they had to set up traps and uh, kind of corral her, and it took them three weeks to catch her, three weeks of watching her on the street and hoping that she didn't get hit by a car and when we got her, oh, she was skinny. She was so skinny. She only weighed like 45 pounds and she's almost 80 pounds now. And she was covered with so many um, sores and she had every, of course, uh, pest that you could possibly have. Orange and purple. See, I did some... Um, I did some papers with the orange and purples and I was so excited by the way they came out that I want to do more with them. And, and that's not normally something that I gravitate towards either. So yeah, when we brought Zoe home, she had no idea about a lot of things. Um, she, well, of course she wasn't house broke, but a lot of the rescue dogs you bring home aren't house broke yet. She um, had no bite inhibition, so she didn't realize that if she put her mouth around your arm that she wasn't supposed to chomp down on it. The first, probably the first six months we had her, I, you know, didn't take her outside to do any training with her without wearing two layers of padding on my arms and I wore leather gloves to work with her because I was always black and blue and often bleeding just because she just didn't know any better, and she was so strong. I mean, she's still so strong. <laughs> Not the name for the tassels, the name for the journals, Lorna. What I want to do, let me explain. All the, the journals that I'm making like these and all these different book text things, they're going to be, uh, the first set is going to be flow journals. But then I want to make the same kind and I want to fill them just with plain paper, plain, you know, tea dyed paper or parchment paper or whatever paper or drawing paper. 
And I'm trying to figure out what to call those. I don't know if I rock, Z Vicky. I think I'm stubborn. <laughs> I think I'm just super stubborn. I am not going to use these kind of loops again. It's <sighs> the so last of them. I want to use them up. I was looking at some of the stuff I have on my shelves, and it's like, you know what? Some of the stuff is just not even worth using up. I'm. I have a friend who's a got a daycare, and she does do glue gun assemblage with her kids and lets them, you know, point to stuff and glue them all over the place. And I find things that I'm not going to use anymore that aren't dangerous for the kids and they go off in a pile to her. All right. Two tassels done. Woohoo. <laughs> She's a good dog. Lorna, I'm, I'm going to hire you out then as my namer of things. I'll make you my official namer of things. How's that? When you love a, a creature and of course dogs are easier to train in most cases than than cats so I'm going to say when you love a dog um, and you do rescue dogs like I do you you have to be willing to put in the work for them they're just um, you don't know what their history is I mean Zoe had been shot several times so we had some pellets taken out of her and she still has a BB in one place on her ear but the vet decided it wasn't worth putting her under to get that out uh, she has a still has a fear of um, really tall men with hats. She doesn't mind if they're carrying something overhead, but she does not like hats. So you, you don't know. You have to be willing to. Um, you have to be willing to, to listen to what they're telling you with their body when something is, you know, not not a good place for them. And even though we'd had her for several years, when we moved to this house, we are in the mountains and there's hills and valleys. So sound carries very oddly. And the first, I would say it's probably two months of living here that she was very nervous. And she had one spot in the hallway that she would stay pretty much most of the day because the sounds just um, were getting to her. I would barely hear something and she would whimper and go into the hallway. And it was funny because before we moved in and we would come out here to the property just to, you know, to hang out, she loved being here. She loved running around. She loved coming in and out of the house. But suddenly when we weren't going home, that was, that was a hard thing for her. Oh, coffee. Well, let's see. I just made my Starbucks run already, Lorna. You know how addicted I am to that. Recycle caps. What do you mean recycle caps? Like um, like baseball caps? Because, you know, that's got to be an interesting thing. Tell me, yeah, what kind of caps? Now my man's going. Well, now that I'm into this, like, hand stitching and the, the Japanese mending and that kind of stuff, I look at everything as the potential to uh, to sew something over the top of it. <laughs> And I guess, you know, that is just hearkening back to, you know, my teen years in the 70s when we did embroidery on everything. But this is, of course, a little different. Hello, Julie. I haven't seen you in a long time. Last I heard, I think you were doing, was it your son's wedding? Lovely to see you here. Thank you for the kind words. I am addicted to making those darn things. I think that's what I'm going to be doing a lot of this coming year. But it was so funny. I had, I think I have like 30 of the covers done. So I thought, okay, the first thing I'll do is I'll cut up all my scrap pa scrapbook paper that I know I'm not going to use and, and fill them with that. I, I seriously thought I was going to be able to fill all the journals with that and uh, realized that the tall stack of scrapbook paper really didn't go quite as far as I thought it did. So that means I'll just be making lots of papers, which is good. So here's a question. Deborah Norse Lattimore. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe you are here in my live stream. Okay, people. Deborah Norse Lattimore is a fabulous, fabulous children's artist. 
and book illustrator and writer and teacher of art. She teaches at the Otis School of Design in Southern California. And I, she is a longtime friend. I love her to pieces. And I cannot believe she's here in my stream watching me make <laughs> these silly tassels. Deborah, here's what I'm making them for. Here's what I'm making them for. My journals that I'm going to fill with papers. Oh, son and wife's baby. Maybe that was it, Julie. I couldn't remember. It was something. I remembered son. I get points for that, right? Yeah, Deborah, this is what I do instead of writing books now. <laughs> and what's fun is I it's like doing a school visit, only I don't have to get dressed into anything fancy and go out and drive anywhere. Love that part. Snail trail journals. Okay, Lorna, I don't know. I'm going to have to cut you off a of coffee or else, you know, amp it up with some espresso. Snail, snail. Snail is slime, right? I don't think that's any more attractive than plain Jane. <laughs> Maybe I call them vanilla. They're vanilla journals if all they have in them is writing paper or drawing paper. So, Deborah, when you name your paintings, do you have any tips of how you name paintings? We've been talking about naming things. Oh, you're crazy about tassels. Well, next time you'll have to see some of my fancier ones. These are just kind of simple ones. Sometimes we put beads on them, but they look really pretty hanging off the side of a, of a journal once everything's all filled up. I'm trying to not go crazy on these journals, though, because I know if I go too crazy, then I'm going to want to put a higher price tag on them, and I would really like to keep them reasonably priced and free shipping and all that good stuff. But I probably should be making a bunch of boho beads, too, because two friends gave me a huge bag. Each of them gave me a huge bag of costume jewelry. And uh, I, oh my goodness, I have so many beads and dangles and sparkly bits that I have got to use up. So I probably need to add beads to these. And I don't think there's a market for just selling tassels. Otherwise, I just make a bunch of tassels and fill them with beads. But I guess I could call them charms, huh? Charms are probably more marketable than tassels. Good morning, Jody. So happy to see you here. I don't think I've had you in chat before. If so, you haven't spoken up. Happy to have you. I am doing the absolutely fascinating, mesmerizing, sure to not put you to sleep, hopefully, process of making tassels for journals. Because, you know, if I'm going to sit here, I can't just sit here. And I don't want to turn on the TV. I would rather talk with friends about doing artsy things. Okay, so last time we did a live, we talked about food and what we were looking forward to for, for Christmas dinner. Well, we've just been finalizing our Christmas menus, and I want you to know that my husband is making a crab quiche for Christmas dinner. I cannot wait. Mm. What foods are you guys looking forward to? I just made a giant mess, right? Nobody shouted at me. Why didn't you shout at me to stop this? I was going to make a mess. Yeah, Lorna, you're probably right. There's a market for everything. <laughs> But, you know, I get distracted. It's shiny. I want to go off and go do just do something else. And I can't keep doing that. All right. I got to straighten these out again because now I'm not getting everything in here, I don't think. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I want my mashed potatoes, but I want it with butter. <laughs> and I want mashed potatoes that have gone through the ricer so they're nice and smooth and there's no lumps. Aren't I a picky, picky, picky one, huh? Lorna, weren't you in charge of keeping me on task? And now look at this. I've got a big old mess. I bet some of these do this though, right? Whoops. Sorry, bunk the camera. I will say though that the new filming setup is great because I have it just set up all the time. I just need to come over and plug in the laptop and I'm ready to go. So that is progress. Okay. 
So I do not have, what don't I have in this one? Okay, I'm gonna put this one aside and we'll see what's left when I'm done. I'll do this one. One of these. See, they get all tangled up. And I was trying to think how I could prep this to make it even any better before I came on live and I didn't come up with anything, so. Okay, let's see here, I have to read. I gotta go back and chat here. Christmas cookies, Lorna, tell me, what kind of cookies are you making? I haven't made Christmas cookies in years. Cream cheese, sour cream, butter, and onion powder. Oh, that sounds delicious, Julie. <gasps> Papery. Ooh, Terry. I like those ideas. I'm going to play with that. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out how I can write a children's book with my journals. I mean, wouldn't that be fun? How could I figure out how to do something that was that long? How could I get a novel into a journal? That's what I want to do. I see things that Jibid and um, Penny Marshall, who lucky me, I just signed to my design team, are doing with storytelling. And... I haven't figured out my take on it. I'm working on it, but I'm not quite there yet. Wonky stitch journals. Wonky. I like the word wonky because that's just kind of make, that's a happy thing, huh? Wonky. I like that, Lorna. I'm gonna have to play with that one. Wonky stitched, wonky. Wow, what did I do? I forgot to cut that one in half, huh? Yeah, that's too long. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Rollo chocolate ones, sprinkle cookie kiss shortbreads. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. Homemade turtles, making ginger ones now, and peppermint brownies. Imagination me thinks of the name of it. Yeah, you have to put on your other thinking cap, don't you? When you're doing that kind of design stuff, you need two different thinking caps. It's like I was trying to plan out my schedule of uh, working on physical items and then working on the digital designs because they take different parts of my brain. And I'm working on I'm working on an ocean kit right now with lots of blues and greens and it could be a wintry kit, I guess, as well. But it's um, I live near the beach, so I'm thinking ocean. But it's a different part of my brain, not even thinking about naming things, but just thinking about working digitally versus working physically. And I've learned that if I have a day that I'm, I'm doing physical work like this, I am probably not gonna do any digital design work later that day. I can keep working physically, but the two sides of the brain need a rest. Write a prompt on the page to add your own words. What did I miss, Vicki? I feel like I missed something. Margaret, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I think we've had this discussion before, Margaret, about more text in journals. I mean, you know how much I love doing the quotes. And I'm working on, um, I've got like, five or six different quote collections right now I'm working on for you guys. And they probably, they won't be out until January, but telling a story like, um, it's hard. People, now Jibid, her most recent one, if you guys have seen it, the, I think it's called The Mechanical Forest. She actually wrote the story, wrote the short story, and then she illustrated it throughout the journal and then she put a copy of the story at the back of the book and I thought that was just it was beautiful it was a beautiful story fully believable creation story 
of how this mechanical force came to be and, and how it how it changed with this main character. Uh, I was so impressed. I don't have a sto short story brain. I have a, um, a novel brain. So, you know, coming from 10 pages into a journal is one thing, but, you know, 300 pages into a journal is another. I do like to write in verse, so I'm thinking of well, how could I take one of my novels in verse and translate it to the page? Ah, so yes, about writing left and right brain. Yeah, I mean, I spent 30 years in the publishing world, and the writing part comes to me pretty easily now, but merging it with my art is where it's the most difficult. Um, doing something more. I mean, I'm right now I'm doing a lot of public domain stuff. So Margaret and I have talked before about trying to get more text on the page and more storytelling. And I think what you have to do is you have to think of it not as a journal then, because a journal to me is something that you're going to put more into. And so what I'm trying to think in terms of is more of an artist book, which I think a lot of Jibbid's creations are artist books because you know if, if I was ever fortunate enough to buy one of her books I certainly want, wouldn't want to be writing in it I would be treasuring it and having it out and you know looking through it for inspiration and with awe so I guess it's a matter of creating an artist book with very few words that still tells a story I think it's a challenge Yeah, Jibbit is brilliant. You're right there, Julie. She just, wow. <laughs> Her brain works in amazing ways, and I'm grateful that she records it and shares it so that we can all be inspired. I'm assuming you've all that like her have seen the, the most recent one, The Mechanical Force. It just, I've watched it like four times. My husband sat down and watched it with me. And of course, she's got a storyteller voice too, so it's wonderful to listen to her tell her stories. Uh, I think that's everybody on here. Oh, shoot, I lost my. Oh, okay. Coming up on. Yep, that's where the imagination comes in. I'm just long-winded. You know, my story arcs take a lot of a lot of time, but I'm I am playing with the idea and I want to figure out a way to tell some nature stories about the environment. And I figure since I can't draw because I won't take the time, thank you to my friend Terry that tells me it's just cuz I won't take the time to try and learn. Um, then I need to combine my art with words in order to get the message across. Hello, Took. Welcome. Happy holidays to you. Happy to see you here. Margaret, yeah, I, I think probably if there's a, you know, you start like, okay, I'm going to use Gibbet as an example because most of us are familiar with her work, but say the mechanical forest, if if it was me, I would be thinking, okay, the forest is dead. It's all, it's all turned to this mechanical, you know, all the trees have turned to iron, have you? What would have caused this to happen? And so I would start with who is my main character? What does she want? Well, it was like that girl just wanted to wander in the forest. Um, why can't she have it? Well, it's because the forest is all rusted and turned to metal. And then, then you just keep asking why, just like if you were just writing a story. Why, why did this happen? And what can this main character do about it? And if you went back to Jibbid's video and you just sort of watched it frame by frame, and wrote down what happened on each page, what she told you was happening in the story in each page, you'd see, I don't know, maybe maybe her whole book is 750 words. I don't know, maybe it's a thousand words. It's not super long. 
which is part of its charm because she kept you completely enthralled with every turn of the page. Let's see. Well, you have to have something to say and all that something to say is, Margaret, is something you care about. You know, what matters to you? I mean, for me, I know the something that, to say that I want, the things that I want to get across to people is our environment matters. You know, protecting our environment matters, getting rid of invasive species and planting native plants so that the uh, native birds and bees and butterflies will come around. That's that's the story that I'm trying to figure out how to tell in a an artist book, in a journal, in this art format of bookmaking with more art than words, I want to get across the importance of native plants, the importance of permeable ground, the importance of water, of saving our water, of making sure that there's water for all the critters. So you figure out what you're passionate about. And then you just start brainstorming, you know, just jotting down anything that, you know, if you figure out, okay, I'm passionate about the environment. And then you just jot down all the thoughts that come to you around that. And then you, you look at your art as a way to get that image across. And maybe you do like Jibba did and you write a little story about it. You don't have to necessarily put it in your book, but maybe you write the story for you to help you remember what it is you want to say. Picture book writers and, uh, and I think like television writers and things, they do things with storyboards. And so they're trying to figure out how to tell a story and they create these boards that just go, you know, um, like like little comics. And they say this happens and then this happens and they're just drawing little pictures, stick people even, you know, it works. And then you're writing the story that goes along with those characters. But, you know, it, it has to be something you care about because it's like what we were talking about with drawing, you know, yeah, I could probably learn how to draw, but I have to care enough about wanting to learn how to draw to be willing to put in the time. And thus far, you know, that hasn't been the case with me. I haven't been willing to put in the time on it. This one feels like it's missing something. Uh... Laura, yeah, and, and Jibba doesn't go live, but I highly recommend looking at her mechanical force. She has a very slow speaking voice. So remember with any of these YouTube videos, you can always speed up the the watch time. So watch it at one and a half times speed or 1.75. It goes a little faster. Vicki, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Kathleen, did I miss a Kathleen coming? Oh, Kathleen, hello, I missed you. Haven't seen you in a live for a long time. I have made a mess of this pile, guys. Okay, I'm gonna do a different color. <laughs> uh, I know I have a few purples. So let's see if I can get a few of the purple ones done. I need a length. Uh, I'll go this far, this far. Maybe I should do them one at a time as I'm pulling out the colors and then I wouldn't make quite as much of a mess of it. Ah. But where's the fun in that, right? The fun is in the mess. Yeah, Margaret, it's just a matter of asking questions. I mean, what is something that you care enough about that you want to get that message across in your journal? That, that's the whole thing. Yeah, Australia burning at the moment is <sighs> devastating, absolutely devastating. I don't have any orange out here. In fact, I don't have a whole lot of orange fibers, but uh, I've got a few purple journals I'm working on. Ah, Kathleen's wrapping gifts. I am going to have to brave the garage and um, get the wrapping paper out eventually. And I say brave the garage because for the last two months, we've just been tossing stuff, you know, opening the door and kind of tossing things in because of all the renovations that we're doing. Let's see. Okay. Well, this might actually work out better if I do them one at a time like this and I won't maybe waste as much time the other way. 
I'll find another time though. I will. All right. Do we have anything in here we want to use? Uh, all about use it up. See, I should really start packaging up fibers to sell because you guys, this is the fibers that I have out here is like one twentieth of what there is in the studio right now. It's insane. I'm crazy. Kathleen, they have to go to northern Idaho and that well, okay, Oregon to Idaho. I guess they could make it, but boy, it's gonna be expensive to ship, isn't it? We only had to ship one thing today and it wasn't a gift, so it may or may not get there in time. Let's add some white to make the purple pop. And I don't like that gold. Let's add this one. All right, so why didn't you guys tell me? I should have been doing these one at a time. It would have gone a little bit easier that way. Oh, Vicki, that's a really good idea. My grandson gets a, a gift card because he wants to shop for himself, and I don't see him often enough to really know them well anymore so of course the whites are all hanging out together that's not what we wanted all right i have to say having the webcam on this long swing arm set up all the time is very awesome it took me like five minutes to get set up to come online today which was terrific and the only thing that i struggled with is that i couldn't for some reason use the microphone that I wanted to use, but hopefully the sound has been okay because you guys are all hearing me. So at least that part's working. I just can't use my nice microphone for some reason today. So I expect I can do more lives. I just need to stop and think about, is this something worth doing live? And then you guys tell me, I mean, you guys sat with me last week for an hour while I just glued book text to bases, which was really nice. The girls want fountain pens. Ooh, that's nice. I remember when you first figure out the joy of a really nice pen. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, let's see if we'll do these. Size-wise, we'll go the other direction. In here. So after Christmas, it's going to be time for me to start thinking about the glam journals and doing my first batch of 60. They're due in April, but I do not want to leave them until, you know, March to do. So I think I'm going to start working on them in January. I have 60 due in April, 60 due in June, and I think the others are due in October. It's the only, at this point, committed thing that I have, so that's good. No ugly sweaters from this, Graham. Well, let's see, this time next week, gosh, Christmas will already be over. That just doesn't seem possible. I swear, it this year just went by super fast. And I know my mom used to tell me that, you know, time went by so much faster when you were an adult. And I think she's right about that. Oh, there's a little bit of orange for you, Vicky, in there. Purple and orange. We used to do solstice dinners. I like that. Maybe I need to suggest that again. I'll tell you what, I am looking forward to that crab quiche for Christmas dinner. Yum, yum. Normally he does just a regular quiche. So I got this new recipe I want to try. 
Let's see, almost there. I was so lucky oh, a few months ago when I went into this one thrift shop and I think there were like, I don't know, 20 balls of fibers in the bag and I got them for like three bucks. It was awesome. That's a nice fluffy purple one. Ah, so your son's older than mine. My son just turned 40 this year. Traumatic, as far as he was concerned, I think. I keep telling him I don't understand how he can be 40, because in my head, I am still, honestly, just about 35. That's where I'm going to keep my brain. My body tells me otherwise, but in my head, I'm about 35. One of these days, I'm going to make myself a little pegboard, so then when I'm doing these tassels, I can just put the ring around the peg to hold it. Cause you know, you always want that third hand there just for that one first tie. Oh, Lorna, thanks. Now I feel even older. <laughs> yeah, my baby's 37. Vicki, my mom used to have to, my mom lived in uh, Bremerton for many years and she used to have to worry about that mustiness with a lot of stuff, her bathroom towels, they had a, um, oh, a, a workout room that was built. Oh, and my sister lives in Bremerton still, although she summers in Arizona. All right, maybe we'll do one more purple one. Just because Vicki loves purple and we'll give her something pretty to look at while she's watching things here. Yeah, it just feels like at 35, I knew enough to uh, to slow down before I speak, you know, take a deep breath before I answer. I'm less less likely to go off the handle. I was learning to value friendships in my 30s. I was learning how to you know who I was in my 20s, except for a mom taking care of babies or watching somebody else's kids and and when, uh, yeah. So 35 just sort of seems like a good place to, to say, that's it. I'm going to hang here for a little while. Oh, wow, Vicki. That's a good way of thinking of it. I turned 60. It was just like any other day. <laughs> I thought about trying to do some special kind of celebration. I thought, no, it just it is just another day. Age is just a number. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it any power over me anymore. I mean, my husband is 14 years younger than I am, and so we learned 20 over 20 years ago when we met to um, to not worry about a number. It's just a number. Don't give it any kind of power. If you're happy and you make a good team, that's what matters. If you're happy in your life, you're doing the things that make you happy. You can be 30 years old and be an old lady because you, you're you kind of stuck in a rut. And I've known some people like that. And it's so sad because it feels like even in their 30s, like they're just waiting to die. And... It just breaks my heart because, gosh, I've got so much I want to do in my life. I don't ever want to stop. Singing in the rain. Welcome. Hello. I'm just about closing down here. I don't know. Maybe I could pull up a different color. I could make some in a different color if people want to hang out for a little bit more. We have a beautiful day, all things considered, out here today in California. Absolutely poured all day yesterday, and I think today and tomorrow we have no rain. And then Saturday it comes back, and it's supposed to rain for like the next week. Uh, 
Yeah, my first husband and I used to go to Oregon a lot. We would go up to Eugene, where his family was from. Loved the, the lushness of both Oregon and Washington. All right, let's see. I don't have that many purple journals, so I don't want to have too many of those hanging around. What else do we have over here? You guys want to hang out for a little bit more? Should I stick around for a few more tassels? Three inches expected tomorrow. We got, oh, singing in the rain. I'm in Scotts Valley. Oh, I know. Let's see. I actually have a couple black and white ones. So let's do a couple of those. We got two inches yesterday. And uh, that was a little bit too much excitement as far as the dog was concerned. She was not crazy about I mean, she'll go out in it, but she's not crazy about it. All right. Oh, you lived in Aptos, yeah? Hey, Shelby. Hello. Happy to have you here. We looked at houses. We lived in San Jose for a long time, and we, uh, we knew we wanted to come over here because my husband went to college in Santa Cruz. And so we wanted to come this direction. And we looked as far out as Aptos and Freedom, um, Santa Cruz, you know, all those areas. But he still has to commute over the hill once in a while, like he is today. And Aptos is just so far out. It's just really our favorite restaurant in the world is out there, though. Um, And my mind just went blank. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that my mind went blank on the restaurant. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it is expensive. Hey, Maggie. Yeah, I always catch you at dinner time. Maggie White, if you guys have not seen it, Maggie White is doing a series right now on how she makes her absolutely beautiful fabric journals. And uh, Cafe Sparrow, that's the restaurant, Cafe Sparrow and Aptos. Boy, I was feeling really bad there. Um, Maggie's series is amazing. And y'all, if you want to do fabric books, you should go check it out because I learned some new things about putting together fabric books. Yeah, we looked out there. It was so far for him to drive to get back into work because there's just like one way in and out of town although the shopping center there where that um that bayview hotel is is that what that's called right there in downtown aptos they put in a huge old shopping center there um there's a whole food not a whole foods uh shoot one of the the good stores is out there and grocery stores penny ice creamery is out there now there's they're building it all up. And of course they're doing the big antique mall is gone. Oh, grass Valley. Grass Valley is way North. Whew. It's a long drive. Margaret, if you just look for Maggie White, she'll show up there with her beautiful smiling face in the picture. And you would love her channel. If you haven't seen it before, you need to subscribe because you would love it, Margaret. She does a lot of your kind of stuff. Yeah, if you just click on somebody's face in the chat, it should take you to their YouTube channel. Maggie, your series is great because you really are breaking down things. I mean, I knew about cutting apart the appliques and stuff, but I didn't stop and think about the way you did it and the way you construct the books was just super helpful to me. As soon as I can find my island again in the studio, I am going to pull out all my, I've got like four bins of lace that I've just been throwing in there. 
And it also looks like you don't always use vintage lace, which kind of gave me um, a little bit more of a spark because I don't have a lot of vintage lace. Oh, you left in 83, so there's been a lot of changes then. All right, let's see, is that enough? Needs more black. Needs more black, let's see. Yeah, that'll work, right? Black enough, I think so. The one thing that coming online does is at least it's gonna make me be accountable because I'm gonna have to report to you guys that these journals are done and ready to go in the shop soon. Otherwise, the next time we come on live and I'm doing something that's not related to these journals, you guys can call me out. Let's add some ribbon. Let's add some ribbon. Hey, Elaine. Happy to see you. Vicki, it is quite the rabbit hole if you fall down it. But, you know, I can't resist when I can find, you know, dresses that have lace on them at a good price at the Goodwill store. There's a little bit of sparkle in some of these. Yes, a little bit. Last time you were here was in 93. Yeah, a lot of change. Well, considering we came from San Jose, this is a huge improvement as far as I'm concerned. So Maggie, have you ever done a guest book? I've been trying to figure out how to put one together for somebody. And part of me was thinking maybe what I would do is use your fabric book as like an outside cover and then make the inside paper, you know, like maybe just like slid into a pocket or something. I don't know. Because you don't need a lot of pages for a guest book. It seems like if you make a make it too big, it's just going to be kind of wasted. So your books are the right size, maybe with just little simple journals tucked into each of the pockets. Hello, Mary Jones. Happy to see you here. I am making tassels, lots of tassels to go on these journals that I made. Nothing super unusual, but I just wanted some company. Oh, okay, Maggie. Okay, I'm on the right track then. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like you need a lot. I thought, well, maybe if I just make the fabric cover and I put in each po put a pocket on one side and then a picture on the other that they could replace with their wedding picture. So singing in the rain. Oh, born in San Jose. Yeah, that's just not a place that that appeals to me. I grew up in Concord, which is um, about another hour north or so of San Jose. And it was a small town when I was growing up there. And so San Jose just freaked me out. I moved back to California. I'd been in New Orleans for a few years. And when I moved back to California, it was, it was a shock for me to go to San Jose. Not a fan. And we left there because the crime had gotten so bad, I couldn't take the dog with me anywhere anymore because I needed her to be home and guard in the house. And that's a scary thought. And maybe there's just a little bit of sparkle left on here. So Vicki says, I made a guest book for my grandson's first birthday, made a letter for each page, sprayed stencils, had people sign the letter of their name. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I like that idea. Singing in the rain, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, Maggie, you gave me some, some more things now to, to think about. I appreciate it. I just think, you know, so many people don't know what to do with our journals. So making a, a regular journal for them doesn't make sense. But some of the gals that really liked my stuff wanted me to make one. And uh, I'm just kind of like 
chasing my tail, figuring out what to do with it. I also thought if we had a lot of journaling cards in one, people could just make like individual comments on a card and tuck them in to maybe a little lace bag that was inside the journal, something like that. Oh, Kathleen, I didn't realize Sunnyvale. Yeah, that's where my husband works over in Sunnyvale. Let's see. Are these long enough? Not quite. Do another black one in here. Yeah, as long as people would actually, you know, fill them out right there and put them in and not just put them in their pocket and take the cards home, I think that would work. Ooh, I like this sparkle. Okay. This one's got music paper in it. I really like the way that one came out. Something different. One more white. Guys, all my stuff is getting all mixed up. I have no idea what I've used and I haven't used. And it doesn't matter. I need to remember, it doesn't matter. They're all great. They're all fun. It's all fine. I end up with two of the same one in there. It is not the end of the world. But gee, who's going to come over here and help me clean up this mess, huh? I'm going to have to turn on one of you guys to uh, watch while I clean. Oh, ginger snaps. Ginger cookies are my absolute favorite. Our local bakery um, in Capitola makes the most wonderful ginger cookies at this time of year. And I always get bummed when the holidays are past because they won't make them anymore. Trying to catch up with Chuck. Yes, Chuck, please send me cleaning fairies and Zoe. The only thing with Zoe and cleaning is that I have to be very, very sure that I am not putting any fabric on the floor because Miss Zoe has decided that if there is fabric on the floor, it must mean that it's a new blanket for her and therefore she must lay on top of it. And I tell you what, not everybody wants dog hairs all over their, their stuff. Oh, see, she's disagreeing with me. I talk about her and then she decides to, to speak up about it. Well, I've made these all terrible links. Let's start this one over again here. Polar bear ice cream is no longer in Capitola. I have not seen them for a good many years. So now when I come home from thrifting, like I did the other day, and I had a bunch of fabric uh, that I had bought, and I knew I was going to have to throw in the washing machine. Before I wash it, I throw it on the floor and let Zoe claim it for a day. And she's like in heaven. It's like, oh. Oh, this fabric is mine. Thank you. Thank you. I should try and freeze them. I haven't done that, mostly because whenever we have any kind of dessert in the house, it does not seem to last long. We like our dessert. Besides, you know what's in my freezer instead of cookies is leaves. <laughs> my husband was trying to put something away in the freezer the other day, and it's like, um, can we do something with some of these leaves? Because there's so many leaves in there. I did not finish anywhere near the eco printing that I wanted to print by the end of the summer and uh, everything's sitting there in the, the freezer waiting for me to get to work. This is good. I'm making, I'm making some good progress. All right. We have the earth tones. I have the two black and whites I need. What else? Oh, green, 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 green. I need green. We have the pile of green. So let's get the black ones off of there. Uh, might use, no, I won't use that. What a mess. All right. See, it's a fiber fest, and um, this isn't everything. Yeah, okay, Lorna, I'm glad I'm not alone. It's not just me. Thank you for piping up. Everybody back there is laughing, saying, yeah, 
leaves, leaves in the freezer, but <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> It's just that doing the eco dyeing takes so long and I've got bad knees and a bad back. So standing for the length of time to do multiple batches, like the last time I did them, I did like 60 pages at once. And that was so dumb because, because I don't just do the eco printing when I'm done with them, then I rinse off the leaves and I reuse them before they dry out to do my leaf impressions. So it's really about three days of, of hard work standing and I, I need to next time do them in smaller batches, but I feel like, gosh, if I'm gonna go to the trouble of firing up the barbecue so that I can, you know, boil things, I should make it worth my while, but maybe I should just, I've got enough pans, I should just make up multiple batches and do them in stages. I immediately um, put them in between the papers for the eco printing and uh, they work just fine. Same thing if I'm going to use them for jelly plates. You need to take them out of the freezer and let them, you know, come to room temperature a little bit and uh, you're good to go. Oh, took, yeah, raw food for the dog. That would take up a lot of freezer space too. Yeah, Lorna, what is the deal with that? We need to not be quite so crazy. We don't have to do it all at once, right? even though it feels like that. I just feel like, you know, I'd rather get the paint. I'm going to, I know I'm going to hurt no matter what. So I sort of feel like I just want to get the pain over with, <laughs> but I need, I need to figure out if I can balance my time a little better. And really, if I'm not going to make the leaf impressions, if I tell myself not to do the leaf impressions and just do the eco printing, then I don't have to unwrap them all at once. The only time my leaves get ick is if I take them out of the eco printing papers and then I put them in a tub of water just to, you know, keep them ready and kind of rinse off some of the minerals before I do the other stuff. Um, if I don't get to them within two days, then they start getting kind of slimy. But I still use them because I rinse my papers when I'm done. Uh, this has gone a different direction in the greens. Okay. Let's add some of this sparkly stuff. Oh, Margaret, you've got some great colors for dyeing. Are you going to do papers or fabric or both? Oh, wow, that stuff's really thin. I'm going to do watercolors either tomorrow or Monday on paper. And then, uh, then I have a whole bunch of sprays that I think have probably mostly dried up. So I'm just going to kind of dump them into containers and dip my papers in them and see what kind of crazy stuff I get. Yeah, my mother-in-law saves all the avocados um, for me because she's got an avocado tree. So she saves all the pits for me. So at Christmas time, I should be able to go over there and get a whole bunch more. Yeah, Lorna, if you've got to uh, watch where you put your energy, your body is going to tell you, you know, you overdid it. And then that's no fun to be sidelined. And I need to remember just not to stay in one place. Like yesterday, cutting scrapbook paper, I almost made the mistake of just standing. I mean, I have one of those fatigue mats, but almost standing in the studio. And my studio floor is bamboo, which is really hard. It's like tile. And uh, I got smart about halfway through. It's like, okay, you've been standing for an hour now. You need to go do something and sit down. So then I came in here and I sat down and worked sitting for a while. Then I have to get up and move. That's the only part about getting older I don't like. That's the part of my body that is not still 35. My body says, okay, you can think in your brain you're 35, but I'm going to tell you every once in a while that there's parts of your body that don't work like, like they did anymore. Maggie, do you use only vintage lace or do you use some of the uh, the polyester laces on there? When I was looking at your video about cutting apart the appliques, it looked like a couple of them maybe had some of the polyester netting. And I thought, oh, well, if Maggie's using that kind of stuff, then maybe I can get away with it. Because <laughs> you are my go-to person for the fabric books.
Okay, so sometimes you do. Took, did you do any of the um, the after treatments with the uh, beetroot? Because isn't that one of the ones that if you treat it afterwards with either baking soda or vinegar, depending, shoot, I can't remember what it is, but there's chemical reactions depending on what you dip the paper in afterwards. You get one color with one and one with the other. Somebody with more experience with beetroot and chemistry want to pipe in? I, I'm drawing a blank right now. I haven't gotten into much chemical wise with mine other than, you know, making sure my papers have been painted with alum or dipped in alum water beforehand. Oh, Lorna, that's fabulous. I hope they, um, I hope they can find something to help you. Kathleen, you got your own tens machine. I am jealous. That was like the favorite thing about going to, PT was to have that machine took I'll I'll take a look and see what I can find on that and uh, and send you a, a message about it it was something about and I'm pretty sure beetroot was one of the ones that changed colors depending on what you dip the paper in afterwards so I will I will look it up and see what I can find That's me too. Drinking a lot of water, so I got to get up and go to the bathroom and move around. That helps. Yeah, th this this getting old thing stinks with our bodies not wanting to keep up with what our minds are at. Wait a minute, Kathleen, you only paid thirty dollars for a tens unit. I might need to check into that. So, Lorna, is the DNA thing just for this test, or is it going to be one of those where you discover long-lost relatives? Because I have had that happen with me and several of my friends, some to good news and some to less good news. <laughs> and then, of course, the vision thing, which I know Maggie's had tons of fun with vision stuff. I've got weird vision things happening. I do not want to think about that we need our eyes and we need to be able to move I mean I, and I think I said this the other day you know I I used to uh, work at a horse ranch so I was hauling bales of hay around and <laughs> I think now my gosh I mean I, I could get my you know 80 pound dog to the car if I had to you know an emergency but boy that would be a stretch <laughs> I need to add some white in here Uh, so it's the uh, research data program. That's really a good idea. I wish my son would do that. My son has uh, muscular dystrophy. Oh, funny, Took. So it's like, no, no, you really, you really aren't what you've grown up thinking you are. That's funny. Well, I found a sister that I didn't know I had. Well, I didn't find her. She found me um, because she did the DNA test. So she's a half sister. And I'd already found another half sister. I had a friend who discovered a difference in parenthood that was not originally what she expected and was kind of um, disheartening. I mean, she's worked through it, but it's, it's some of that stuff scary, but medically it would be nice to have all the medical information. I didn't know my dad. So I, you know, put together a little bit of information from the siblings that, that knew him, but not a lot. All right, Kathleen, I'm going to have to check that out because I would not, not mind having a TENS unit on me while I'm sitting here crafting. My right shoulder is the one I've got a partial disability on, and, of course, the right is my dominant side, so that does make things kind of tough sometimes.
Uh, it's the other good thing about the webcam. My goodness, using it, I've been on for an hour and a half and nothing has shut its... Well, I looked away while I thought I was pulling the knot. That did not work so well. Uh. Okay. So I think I'm coming to the end here because I'm going to have to <clears throat> go hydrate myself. I forgot to bring any water over with me. That's not a good idea. Let's see, how many tassels did I get done? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, that's very productive. That feels very good. 15 of them. So that's, that's nice. Maybe I can, maybe that'll make my goal then to get these 15 tassels onto 15 journals and those journals filled with papers so that I can get them out of the studio and get them into the Etsy shop. So I think I'm going to call that a day. That's been an hour and a half and I need to get some water in me. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me while I did this. And I will um, I probably won't come on tomorrow, but one day next week I will come on and do something else. You guys have a holiday that is absolutely fabulous. Whatever kind of celebration you do, I hope you get to spend it with people you love and that you laugh a lot. Happy, happy holidays. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.